Welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. The John Deere Suzuki Frankenstein Part 3. Well, if you noticed at the end of my last video, I made a comment about the governor and, and probably shouldn't have messed with it. Well, guess what? You probably shouldn't mess with it if you don't know what the heck you're doing. I've never claimed to be an expert on anything, but I like to tinker with everything. This one bit me in the butt, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, what happened in the, after the last video is I was playing with the governor trying to get it to idle down a little bit lower because I wanted it to idle a little lower so when you engage it in it to drive it, it didn't clunk quite as hard when it's in the water. Well, I was taking around back there and there again, me not know anything about the governors on these V-twins or most, I know what they do. I don't know how to adjust them. No clue whatsoever. What happened is I went to adjust this one what I thought was I was adjusting it to get it to idle lower, went from the next time I started it up and went rah, and just went to top RPM. I shut it down immediately. Didn't do any damage to the motor that I thought. Uh, fired it back up. I did some more twink, twink, twinking, twink. I did some more tinkering and then I found out what I did wrong after I went inside, Googled some people that knew what they were doing about adjusting governors and realized exactly what I'd done wrong. Came back out, adjusted it exactly how they said to adjust it, and it still revved wide open. So what I think I had happen is by me tinkering in there, or by me having it go wide open, I'm pretty sure I did something that caused the governor to go out of whack. So I've got to get into Frankenstein's brain. So he's got a little bit of a brain hemorrhage going on right now. So we got to get in there and... I'm gonna pull the power head off, put the put it on the bench. I'm gonna take the bottom case off to get and gain access to this governor. And if I learn that that's the problem, I'm gonna show you guys exactly what's going on with it and how I fixed it and how we and then how to properly adjust the governor and then how to properly adjust the idle. I learned a lot, but that's how we learn. If we don't learn from our mistakes, then we we gain nothing. And I, and I haven't said this in many videos, but. If, People out there think that I call this Michael's Backyard Marina because I'm, I'm an expert at working on outboards. No, that is absolutely not what I'm an expert at at all. I'm an expert at tinkering, discovering, and figuring out how to do it. That's what I like to do. Some people see some of the things I do and they comment. I appreciate your comments, folks. Don't be insulting. If you want to, I don't care. You can be a troll all you want. What I do know is that I'm trying, I'm trying hard, and I'm trying to get things done, and I'm having fun while I'm doing it. If you can't say the same, then reevaluate what you're doing. So I, I get out here and I tinker with the spotters, with these outboards. I've, I've collected a few of them over the past few weeks to play around with. I'm making videos for you guys. I'm learning how to do it as we go along. And you guys, the whole learning process is just you got to do, you got to try it, you got to do it. You don't know you can't do it till you try it and fail, and then you figure out how to do it right. Or you do like I did with this guy here, and we figure out where, where I went wrong. So, long intro. I do apologize for that. Let's get busy doing something fun. Let's get into Frankie's brain here and figure out where he went haywire. Well, where I went haywire to make him go haywire. So, the first thing we're going to do, let me tilt this down a little bit. I've, and I've designed this thing. So it's still serviceable, a lot like a regular outboard. I can undo these six bolts back here and lift this entire power head off as an assembly. That's the beauty of the way I've got it put together. And then to, act, to take the motor off the plate, the base plate, all I gotta do is pull the four original mounting bolts and then the base plate comes off of the motor, which allows me to gain access to all of the bolt bolts that hold the bottom half of the crankcase together and then we'll split that let's get busy first thing i'm gonna do is pull these six bolts off first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna drain the oil out of it now nah, i'm gonna leave the oil in it for now so the first thing i'm gonna do is pull the six bolts off lift this off get it over to the bench and then we're gonna pull this plate off that has this all mounted on it get the motor separator for the mounting plate 
and then we'll drain the oil and gain access to the, we'll split the case, gain access to that governor to see if I can see exactly where things went awry and then show that to you folks. Let's get after it. We're gonna do a little high speed action, like I always do. Enjoy the music, and I already told you what I'm gonna do. Now you can watch me do it. Okay, as you saw, I was able to manhandle this thing off the top of that uh, outboard. That, this thing's heavy. <laughs> I probably won't manhandle it back on, back on. I'll probably put the uh, little cherry picker back in play and set it down gently back in its place, back, back into its space. So I took the drive coupler off, even though it looks like this might pass over it. I'm getting it out of the way. But now there's a series of bolts around the bottom. I've got the oil drained out of it. And we are ready to split the case here once I back all these bolts out. So let's do that. Well, that's exactly what happened. When I misadjusted it, it caused it to run wide open. Fortunately, that pieces did not get any in any of the uh, gears. But look at that. This is what fell out. Oop. There's one piece. There's another piece. There's another piece. And then it looks like the oil pickup screen fell out. I have to do a little examination to make sure I, I think that just sits right down in here. That looks like that came out. So a couple things went on here. Now one thing I don't know that might have happened, being this oil screen, let me get down in here and take a look with you. Get down in here and take a look. So this oil screen looks like it sits right here in this little pocket. I'm not altogether sure that didn't come out. And come in contact with the governor pieces and make it fly apart. Uh, that I'm not sure, but I, I'm pretty sure I misadjusted things because it was just fine and dandy till I misadjusted things. And it caused some unnecessary binding on some of these lovely pieces, but this this uh, governor arm seems like it's in pretty good shape. Doesn't look like, doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it. No excessive wear. But over here I've got to, looks like this gear here. Looks like you buy that as one assembly. The good news is there's not any, not any, Metal shavings floating around in here. It looks pretty clean overall. The inside of the crankcase don't look too bad. Oh, here's another piece. Found another piece. This would normally be on here. And then when this moves in and out, due to these were, these were actual weights that flung in and out. As they flew in and out, they moved this in and out, which applies pressure. Let me show you here. Hard to see here, right there. You can see a little dot right there. Right there is where that little plunger, right here, it goes on the end of the shaft road right there. And so this, as the flyweights move in and out, would cause this to move in and out, which would move the lever, which moves the uh, output shaft for the governor here goes up to the throttle. So, good news is, 
Find the problem, no problem. Bad news is I gotta order some parts to get old Frankie, Frankenstein back together again. All right, as you can see, there is a little tiny clip. It's so tiny. Fits right over this shaft. Well, this gear sits back there. This little clip goes in front. There's a little groove when this is sitting in place. That pops in and keeps this thing from coming off. So, that's don't want to lose that little clip. Don't know if it comes with the new governor set. But here's all the pieces here. Here's the gear off. Now we got to find out what I can buy and what I can't buy. The replacement parts for this thing. Pretty common motor. So it should be pretty, the parts should be readily, readily available. So we'll have to go see what we can find for parts. I'm just really lucky that it didn't get into any of these gears. Nothing's damaged down here at all, which is I'm very fortunate of, because if it would have gotten to here, that would have been a mess. That would have been a hot mess. So now that we know it's the governor, this is what happened when I messed around with Frankenstein. Frankenstein blew his freaking mind. All right, let's go. Out, let's go find some parts and see if we can get this get this guy put back together. I think we'll go ahead and order some uh, gaskets too. This thing's been leaking slowly over a lot of period, period of time, long period of time. This thing's never been cleaned, and it's got to be ten years old at least. At least, golly, this got to be closer to. 15 years old, I'll bet. And we need to put some new valve cover gaskets on it, so we'll look up those as well. All right, we're going to go shop for some parts before we put this thing back together. But that's what it looks like inside. And then I'll show you how I'm putting it back together, a little more clarity as to how the governor works, and then how to properly adjust it. Good news, good news, good news. Old Frankenstein... Parts have arrived. Hey, look at this one. It's a lot better than the one I screwed up. It's in one piece. Been waiting for this to show up. Frankenstein's been laying here with his brain juice all over my workbench here. And I haven't moved it because I didn't want to disturb anything. But you get two pieces when you order this kit. Because this will go on like that. Whoops, I'm sorry. This will go on like that, and this goes inside it somewhat like, like I don't know what the heck I'm doing. There we go. Be in there like that. So that little lip, let's see if you can see that little lip right there, will be underneath that little paw on both sides. So when this thing flings out, it raises that up. It'll This will raise up like that anywho we got to do a little gasket scrape in here and then clean out the uh, oil residue and any little debris that's in there before we slide this little piece of magic back in place all right let's get to gasket scraping we want to get old Frankie back together. We want to hear him purr again. And then I'm going to show you how to properly adjust the governor uh, and not do what I did, which cost me about $50 in parts. Now we're going to do a little Franken flush here. Uh, just like gasket scraped everything. Uh, I just want to get the remainder of the dirty oil out of there and any possible debris. That may have gotten in there. And I like to use, honestly, I've been using the brake cleaner for a lot of this. And I'm letting it run right into my trash can. Then I'll set my trash can outside to air out. This will get rid of the grease and oil off the surfaces of your gasket surfaces. I can see this. This nice thing about brake cleaner is it has a little bit of pressure behind it. It allows you to really to flush it out. And I can feel real good about putting that back together. 
knowing that that's clean inside. This thing was amazingly clean for having 530 hours on it. But there again, I've always used good quality oil. Changed it every 50 hours like it, like it recommended. It looks like now that I got it cleaned up, I got a little bit of gasket I missed there. Just a little extra time making sure you get all this gasket off is well worth it not having a little seepage, weepage, or leakage going on. Oh, yeah, I missed the spot right there. Now there's a washer that was back here. Let's see if I can get you in the shot here. Good close so we we'll see what I'm doing. There is a washer right here that sat behind the governor gear. And governor what i'm going to do is i'm going to put a little dab of oil on that here i've just got some straight 30 weight that's what's going back in the crankcase i'll put a little bit on the shaft kind of make sure this washer's wet with it now obviously once you fill this back up and it's sitting with this shaft pointing straight down toward the ground once you dump about two quarts in this thing oops sorry in this thing it's going to have plenty of lube but i want to I want to start it off on the right foot. We'll put a little bit on this face, on the shaft there. Plop that back in. Now, the timing is not critical on this gear where it goes into place. Just as long as it goes in, just drop it in there. One and done. Now this piece here, you want to make sure is in here, goes in gonna fight me now that I'm trying to show you it's got to go right back in between here so maybe I gotta uh, get it in here with the shaft not in the way and then there we go maybe that's the first time I'm doing one of these so the struggles are real and genuine there we go now when this thing works see it's got a limiting factor it can only go so far so when these weights fling out it pushes on there which will push on our governor rod and the governor spring, when everything's not running, brings it back down. So now we got some lube on there. We're good to go. And this also runs down into oil uh, as well. I'm pretty sure it's got to be hitting the oil to a certain degree. But that also works as a flinger, I'm guessing, to fling oil up around all of these gears and keep everything lubricated. And around this shaft. This shaft is in beautiful shape here. That runs, this one doesn't have a bearing on the bottom end. Now some of them have a ball bearing engine. Um, this one runs just on a, on a, it's got a positive oil pump in it or pump, an oil pump in it because it has an oil filter. So it rides on a bearing, just like in your car, your car crankshafts ride on bearings that are not roller bearings. They're just regular, uh, hardened, hardened crankshaft against, uh, obviously a different type of material in your car. It's a bearing, bearing material in your car is different than the aluminum housing on these Briggs is, but we're ready, to, uh, we're ready to put this cover back on once I clean the cover up. So we'll do that next. Now, one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of assembly lube on here. Since I've actually gotten this thing completely dry of oil from using my brake cleaner, I'm gonna make sure all the bearing surfaces have A little bit of lube on them so there's nothing they have nothing starting up dry so this bearing face here this diameter of the shaft here I've got lube behind there I'll make sure we get a little bit on the face of this gear there nothing's gonna go together dry now and these gears will be splashed in oil almost immediately now with the gasket set came this neat little instruction that shows all the, it says here, lubricate the crankshaft journal with fresh clean engine oil. Carefully install the sump over the crankshaft so that the oil seal is not damaged, which we need to do for sure. Install a new crankcase cover bolt supplied with the service kit. Do not reuse the original bolts. They give you brand new bolts. that have brand new Loctite on them, which is cool. 
And then it says to torque them, hand torque the bolts, uh, tighten them to one third and then two thirds and then final torque in a sequence shown below. So they get your number sequence here of how, what they want them to torque that. And so you get a final value of 325 inch pounds. Install, install the oil pump as shown in the repair manual, which I didn't remove the oil pump. Now the oil pump here is driven. There's a slot in the camshaft here that drives the oil pump. So when you slide it back together, we gotta, we gotta rotate this thing around so that the, this slot and the, let me show you in here real quick. There is a, can you see that in there? There you go, right there. You can see right down in here that there's a slot or a T or whatever you wanna call that, boss area, that drives the pump, goes right in here. So you gotta get that lined up, otherwise it will not go together for you. I'm not going to use any gasket material or gasket shellac or anything on the gasket. The original gaskets are put together dry and that's just how we're gonna do these. Simply because the gaskets, you can you can actually inhibit the gasket working properly by putting some gasket products on some of these due to the fact these gaskets are designed to react a little bit with oil, swell a bit with oil, and create even a better seal. So anytime you put stuff that prevents the oil from getting to it or making it bond to this material here, the aluminum, you can also create a leak versus what you think is, what you're doing is preventing a leak. So now we gotta line this slot up with that slot and I'm probably gonna roll this engine over a little bit so it's easy to get everything where I want it. So I'm gonna have that slot, we're gonna make it so that slot straight up and down, that's gonna make it easy for us. And we'll go in here and we'll turn this one so it's straight up and down in the cover as well. Well, let's see how successfully I can put this back together. Nice thing is it does have a couple of alignment pins here that holds the gasket in place where you're trying to do this. You probably got to put your fingers on the gasket a little bit here just to... There's a little circlip. I'm laying on my bench over here. <laughs> I was just thinking to myself, did I get everything inside that needs to be inside? I don't know if you remember that earlier in the video, this little clip here. It's actually what traps this gear back into place. So that tells me that this has to, let's try it. We're gonna start it on the shaft, slide this out here. Get these back in the right position. Not a lot of wiggle room here. There, and then we'll see if we can shove that ring back with this cap. Like that, now let's see if it's trapped. Oh yeah, that worked. Now it's trapped. Thrust, thrust, blah, 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 thrust washer is in place. Now, I'm not sure how critical that is, but it keeps that gear from riding out. That gear can only come out so far. Otherwise it could, uh, it may not be good. Anyway, lots of little details to try to remember when you take one of these apart. Not lots, but definitely enough to keep you on your toes. Let's just hope this will get lined back up here again and There we go. Now we can put all the bolts in. Now I'm confident everything is inside where it belongs. Well, there you have it. All the bolts are tightened to uh, 325 inch pounds which is final torque. Like you said, you tighten it down a third of that torque and then two thirds of that torque and then the final torque. 
So that's all back together. Next thing I need to do is get this uh, governor shaft back on. That's back down in place. Now this is as simple as it gets, folks. You can look over here. This is throttle. This is your throttle linkage that goes up to your carburetor. When you push up, that's closing down the carburetor in your idle position and up on top here. Let's see if I can point to it, if it, I can get it in a picture here. There's an idle adjust screw up here. I can't get you in the picture. There's an idle adjust screw here. When you push that up, that goes up against that idle adjust screw. That's going to be your low speed. So pushing down, pushing down is going to be wide open position. So what you want to do is hold this in wide open position. And I've got a little quarter inch wrench on here. This is your... Right in the middle here is your shaft that comes out of the crankcase. That is your governor shaft. You want to push the shaft down. If you're looking at it from this direction clockwise, you also want to take the governor and it wiggles back and forth. Let's see here. Let's see if I can get underneath here. This goes back and forth. You want to be in this direction clockwise as well while holding this in the clockwise position. So hold both of these down. I think I got enough finger span here. And tighten the pinch bolt. So now what I've done is I've held this down in the clockwise position. I've rotated this, let's see, in a clockwise position, the cam. So everything's in the clockwise position. And then while I'm doing that, we'll tighten down the pinch bolt. And that's all you do. Once again, throttle wide open position, push this down so it's rotating in a clockwise direction on this particular V-twin. Rotate your governor shaft clockwise as far as it'll go while holding both of those two in that position, tighten your pinch bolt. Once that's in position, basically what you've done is taken all the play out of the governor. There's no loose play there so it'll function properly. Anything, and li listen to me folks, anything less than that will result in a busted, blown apart governor. And like I said, I got really lucky. Everything went down into the pan. Nothing got into any gears. Nothing destroyed the rest of the motor. Anyway, now that's fully adjusted. Next step. All right, we're gonna do the valve cover gas hits next. Just back these screws off. These are just a 10 cover, so there's nothing uh, crazy fancy there. Make sure you pull the gasket off the inside here. Get rid of your old gasket completely. As you can see, no gasket stuck to that surface. We will carefully wipe this surface clean as a whistle. With that surface clean, we're gonna clean all the stuff over here. The part number we're using on this is 690-971 gasket rocker cover. It's a nice, it's actually a really nice uh, feeling material for gasket. So now that we've got the cover off, this cover is where you'll also find all your pertinent information to be able to buy these gaskets. I think look it up by that number right there. We're gonna go ahead and get everything cleaned up or do it reinstall. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple process. If you can't change the valve cover gasket, uh, you might not want to mess with anything else on the motor. It is so simple. So simple, uh, you and I can do it.
There again, I start everything by hand. I don't like to impact anything to start off with. And now this, I'm not going to impact down. This will be using this to bring it down. Bring it down to close, and then I use my wrench and I'll just do a nice little. This probably should be tightened down to a certain inch pounds, but you don't want to over tighten it. This is just aluminum, folks. There we go. D U N done. Now Frankenstein is ready to be married back up to its body. And hopefully it runs better than it did before. Well, hopefully it runs at least as good as it did before because it ran great. And uh, we'll get that uh, idle adjusted. Once I get that on there, I'll show you that. Well, I've decided to use the original Suzuki gas fitting. Quick connect that's here. So... I put me some new gas line on it. And when we set the motor back in, I got excess here. We're gonna cut it to length so it hooks to the motor. This is gonna be a clean and concise connection. Pretty excited about that. Frankenstein's brain, head, mounted back on his body. And uh, bolted back down, in place, locked down. The one thing I did do is I am gonna utilize, it's hard to see here, there is a quick connect. So the old Suzuki quick connect, quick connect for the gas connection. I'm utilizing that, ran it down, comes out mounted and around, and over here to the fuel pump. So that'll be connected up so I'll have my quick connect as I need. Now I've got to reconnect my, I had to cut three wires in order to make this serviceable here. These three here, so I need to reconnect them back in the box, but I am gonna put some disconnects on them now, I believe, just to make sure that if I have to do this again, I don't have to cut and, and uh, solder wires every time I do it. So we're gonna go ahead and make that connection now. Okay, folks, we got her all back together. Got the three wires connected inside the box and here, like we needed to do. Got the battery connected back up. Got fuel pumped up to it. And uh, we need to see if I got Frankenstein's brain back in order. So let's, uh, let's see if she'll fire up and run. Cross your fingers, folks. Whoa. That was quick.
Okay, folks, as you can see, that thing runs like a top again, runs exactly like it should. The one thing I wanted to do and I needed to do is get the idle back down low. Now, I'm going to show you something here and see if we can get this to focus on it. One on that spring right there. So that spring right there, as you put more tension on that spring, the higher it lets the idle run. Now up here, I'll show you up top. Up top here, there's a screw. There's a screw right there. That's your, that's your idle stop. So you can adjust your idle there. What I was running into issues with and why I attempted to adjust the governor, which was a horrible mistake, is I wanted to get this to rest against the idle screw and it wouldn't. Well, what does keep it from doing that is this spring tension down here. And what I did, let's see if I can get it back on here for you. So what you wanna do, there's different springs. I, I understand that you could order here to change the idle, but also there's this tab right here that the spring is hooked to. And I actually grabbed this and I bend it, bent it toward the spring to take the tension off the spring. And that dropped the idle right down to where I needed it to be and put that tension or put that uh, idle adjustment screw so that stop would actually work. And then if you were to bend this down and lengthen the spring, it would actually make it idle higher, uh, higher. And then your throttle or your idle adjustment screw would be non you know, take it out of it, out of, out of play. It would be non-effective. So once again, I've, if you guys need me to do a separate video on just the uh, governor adjustment, I can do that. But I included it in this video. I may, I may do a separate video on just how to properly adjust the governor. But anyway, when you miss, when you adjust it improperly, you blow it up and hopefully you don't blow your motor up and wreck it. I got lucky. None of the inf none of the parts went inside there and destroyed anything. But anyway, that's the spring you play with to adjust your idle so that it will actually come down and rest on this idle screw. Right now, as you can see, it's not against the idle screw because it's in it's not in a running mode right now. But if it was in a running mode, this would come up and rest against that, and that's your stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's alive, yes. I'm going to call this a video. I'm going to call this a success after a severe failure. Uh, we've got it fixed up and running again. We're back to square one. Now I've got to work on getting my tiller handle and my throttle hooked up. And I'm still in search of a 14 foot boat that has that can handle a short shaft motor. But it needs to be a 14 foot extra wide because I need something fairly stable. It could be 16 foot, but if you're in Iowa, in Eastern Iowa, and you have something like that, that might be interested in and you want to see it on my channel send me a message leave a comment we'll get in touch anyway we got this bad boy back to square one running like a top and we got as you saw I got the idle down low where I want it so I don't actually mash my gears out trying to pop it into gear at a higher rpm so but it's uh I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out I'm not pleased with what I did to it because that cost me some bucks, but we're back. And as you can see, it's serviceable. I can take the power head off and put it back on just like any other motor. And honestly, with a lot less effort and a lot less uh, stuff to work around. So the only thing I noticed so far is that at a lower idle, and this fuel pump, keep in mind, is like that's on here is old. So what I might do is get me a new fuel pump because it doesn't seem to pump as much fuel when it's idling on low RPM uh, as I'd like it to. So I hit the primer bulb and fired right back up again and we're off to the races. But uh, I have a feeling it just doesn't have much, as much uh, pressure, develop enough uh, fuel pump pressure to keep it running. So I hope you folks enjoyed this video. We're gonna get a tiller handle. We're gonna get a throttle on it. 
that's and make it really outboard like and then i think frankenstein will be happy and i'll be happy with frankenstein so guys get out there and do something fun be creative explore don't be afraid to do something different you know if you fail learn from your fa failures and then move on and then uh, try something again so i don't know how many other people have done something like this i know i've seen like i said this as channel is chud chud 327 uh, he has put a lawnmower like a little five horse briggs lawnmower or tecumseh lawnmower engine on top of a little five horse uh, or nine horse or ten horse lower unit i don't know that anybody's done one in this fashion with a 21 horse v-twin four stroke onto a 30 horse lower unit and uh if they have let, send me their link i'd like to see what they did uh I might not, I might, this might not be the last one of these I do. I may come up with some other stuff, leftover stuff, and actually want to turn that into one too. So get out there, enjoy life, have some fun. This is Michael, and I'm out. Hey, you kids, get off my lawn. Don't you understand there's a madman in here at work?